people and welcome to Real Talk with Odun. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you for always being there and for tuning in to watch us and to listen to us. We are so excited to be coming your way this afternoon as usual. Most mm -hmm. especially because this is my birthday month. Yee! And um, yeah. as most of you know, the purpose of this show is for women, basically for women to add their views, to give their opinions about issues. But it's also a platform for us to encourage each other, for us to lift each other up, and for us to support each other. And so in, in, in line and in view of my upcoming birthday, we decided to bring some women on the show to come talk about their businesses. As we all know, there are challenges and there are beauty of running a business. And these women have been there, they've done that. And so they want to come on this show today. We have three women that will be coming on to tell us their business, what they do, and how you can get in touch with them. This is actually our own little way of giving back to all those women that have been supporting us since the inception of this show. And so the first person that will come on today is Moturai of Fasha King. She, is, she has a business in Houston, in the United States of America. I actually will be doing a lot of talking about their businesses. That's what they are coming on to do anyway. And so I'm just going to welcome you to the show, Moturai. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for doing this today. Thank you so much for having me. Good afternoon. Good and afternoon. good afternoon to our viewers as well. Thank you Thank so you. much. Okay, so we are just going to go right straight into it. I want to just tell us your name, what you do, and where you're based. Okay, um, I'm Mutunai of Fashaki, that's my name, um, and I'm a registered nurse as well as I have my own business as well here in Houston, where um, it's Laces and Styles, called Laces and Styles, based here in Houston. We are into fabrics of different kinds, so you, literally we do it like um, the Sukkot Ashwabi back in Nigeria, but here we decided to kind of expand it and not limit it to Nigerian folks alone. So we sell different kinds of fabrics that are made available to everybody, either for prom, either for bridal engagement and stuff, and so on like that. All right. Thank you so much. Like you all know, we're Africans and we party. We like to party. And so for your, exactly. she's your plug in for all your party fabrics, anything African, anything contemporary. She is your plug-in. And so, um, Mutraya, let me just ask you, what are the challenges you faced so far? And how long, how, how old is your business? Let me just ask that. Um, the business, actually, I started um, back in Nigeria when I was still in Nigeria, when um, nobody, you know, back then at home, before this, I shall be of a thing, when a particular family where there is a celebration to be done, so all they need to do is just kind of designate some people on behalf of the family to go do shopping for fabrics. Okay. So as far back as 2003 was when I started. And um, then I think I started because my sister-in-law wanted to do a wedding. And my mother-in-law was like, after I, okay, go to uh, Lagos Island for us. Are you able to do it? And then I was able to kind of shop for the air tie and the fabric for close to like 800 guests. So I was like, wow, oh, wow, this is something I can do myself. That kind of prompted me to start doing this. Because I saw that I had that flair for it. Mm -hmm. I like people to look good. And I mm -hmm. thought that that was what I could do. It so it started back as you. far back as 2002. Yes, oh, exactly. Wow. wow, that means you're like seven years old. <laughs> yes, okay. exactly. All right, so um, what are the challenges you faced? What are the beauty? Because I know... We can't just come out here and talk about negatives, you know, so we want to talk about the negatives and then the positive of having and running your own business. So what are the challenges you faced so far? Um, I could say the only challenges I've faced so far would be kind of attributed to this um, ongoing COVID mm. that um, people are not able to kind of party. So it's like a major challenge, you know, yeah. unlike before COVID, you know, living in the African community, it's always like an advantage, especially here in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, compared to other states where you don't have enough or more of the African food. Okay. So yeah. I think that here, like it is a suitable state or city for, uh, for the business to kind of thrive. But 
since the inception of COVID, it's been a little challenge because people have not been able to gather yeah, and there were together, restrictions. Yeah. So it's not really party time. Yeah, so that's the only major challenge for right now. Oh, okay. And so what are the beauties? What do you say you've enjoyed? What advantage? Did it give you an extra advantage? Did it open doors for you? You know, like, what are the things you've gained from running your own business? Yeah, um apart from let let's take the let's leave the the uh the interest or something aside what i really enjoyed is um being given that opportunity to be part of people's celebration it, it really gives me so much joy mm -hmm. that um when people are kind of doing their weddings their birthdays and they're like oh these fabrics are supplied by this system style it gives me like joy like oh i'm able to kind of add to their day of joy i'm able to participate if i'm able if i'm available i do go there in person just to share in their moments oh, of joy wow. and it has also kind of made me to to know some people you know as it, it, yeah, it, from yeah. people referring mm -hmm. others to you yeah so it kind of brings me to that limelight of people knowing oh this is the face behind this is the style mm -hmm. this is actually motorial that, that's oh. that's the joy seeing people wear my thing is it's really such a huge joy for me. Okay, yeah, I can actually relate because when you style someone, it gives you like, you know, a pat on the back that you actually know what you're doing. And then you get to meet a lot of people and to share in their celebration. Wow, I envy you. So I'm going to give you five minutes <laughs> to like um, advertise yourself, like five minutes to sell yourself. So go. Okay. All right. Um, my name is Mutsumayo. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm the owner and the face behind Laces and Styles. And we are into fabrics, different kind of fabrics, Asha, okay, air ties, turbans, auto gele. Name all the fabrics, even in, including the sweet fabrics for men. And um, I also have like a seamstress or a designer that works with me in case you buy your fabric and you need somebody to sew for you. So we are on Instagram as Laces and Styles, L A C E S N S T Y L E S, and also on Facebook. And my number is 832 387 2097. Thank you very much for that opportunity. I really do appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome, but I, I want you to repeat your number and your address. Is there, is there like a physical location? Um, there is a physical location, though, but we are mainly online. And that's the Instagram, um, at Laces and Styles. Basically, okay. now we're doing more of the Instagram, yes. At Laces and Styles, L-A-C-E-S, N for the hands. It's just letter N. S T Y L E S. Again, it's L A C E N S T Y L E S. And my number is 832 387 2097. 832 387 2097. All right. Thank you so much, Turayo. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sitting with us. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. All right. Yeah, thank you so day. much and happy birthday to you in advance i really thank do appreciate you. this kind of gesture thank, thank you. you so much All right, thank you bye. do have a nice day thank you yeah, All right. Bye. All right. Bye.
owner and the face behind laces and styles and we are into fabrics different kind of fabrics i show air ties turbans auto gaily name all the fabrics even in, including the sweet fabric for men and um i also have like a seamstress or a designer that works with me in case you buy your fabric and you need somebody to sew for you so we are on instagram as laces and styles l-a-c-e-s N S T Y L E S and also on Facebook and my number is A three two three eight seven two zero nine seven. Thank you very much for that opportunity. I really do appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. But I, I want you to repeat your number and your address. Is there, is there like a physical location? Yes, I'm located in Ibadan, Nigeria. Okay, you're welcome. Um, there is a physical location though, but we are mainly online, and that's the Instagram um, at Ladies and Styles. Basically, now we're doing. More of the Instagram, yes, at Laces and Styles L A C E S N for the hand. It's just letter N S T Y L E S. Again, it's L A C E N S T Y L E S. And my number is 832 387 2097. 832 387 2097. important taxes is in this part of the world and like you know it's december january is around the corner and so you will need to start filing your taxes in a few weeks time and so then this next person's name is ayobami or shilaja and she'll be telling us about taxes she'll tell us what she do and how she has helped lots of people in the united states of america welcome to the show ayo oh thank you so much for having me Thank you for coming on. So, um, can you just go on and introduce yourself? Okay. Um, my name is Ayobami Oshilaja, and I um, I run um, the tax preparation company by name Proven Tax and Financial Services. All right. And we're located in Conroe, Texas. Okay. How long have you been doing this? Uh, we've been on it for a little over six years. Ah, taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's really beautiful and um, it has its own challenges. And one of the challenges is the fact that every season you, you still have customers that don't have their stuff correct in the sense that either their books are not right or everything is still all over the place and that always slow work down and that at times kind of hindered them from being able to take the maximum um, credits or benefits that they qualify for if they don't have the right documentation okay i was going to say for the benefits of those that really doesn't know what we are talking about can you just give us like a groundwork of what taxes is all about <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just either you are in United States or outside of United States, as long as you're legally able to work in the United States and you make income in United States, you're required to file taxes. Okay. So how you file that tax or what, under what category you fall is is important okay if you work nine to five eight to six job and all you do is get a w-2 then you're just filing either as an individual as a you know as a married filing jointly which is husband and wife or married filing separately or qualifying widower based off of um 
you know, the situation of your family at that particular time. So the way you make your income now depends on how your taxes go. Okay, are you going to be filing as a sole proprietor, um, just somebody that's just re making regular income, which is strictly off of W-2s and stuff, or you have a side gig coming in, which is extra income? Do you do one thing or the other on the side? So all of that will now will now determine when next where X you fall, okay? So which will be a sole proprietor? Then as a sole proprietor, how is your income generated? How is your business, you know, structured? So that takes us to the next level of either you register as an LLC. So if you if you're structured as an LLC, did you elect to be to file your taxes as an S corporation, SC corporation, and all of that. So how did you plan for your growth? So the way you make your money, the way you structure your business now determines how you file your taxes. And then also the next, another type is, are you in partnership with somebody? If you're in partnership, either you yourself in partnership with somebody or your business in partnership with another business, you know, all of those things comes together whereby you file, uh, you know, the whatever income, whatever income that comes in from each of those businesses, you have to report it, you know, distribute uh, profits and all that, and then you file taxes on it. All right. Thank you so much. I, I have a question while you were talking. And the question is, if I live here, but don't make income here, like I make income outside the United States, am I still expected to pay taxes here? As long as you are either United States citizen, you are United States, uh, you are legal resident, you are required to, uh, to file taxes. Okay. Even though Your I'm not income can either here. be... Your income can either be sourced abroad or can be done here. Can be can be from United States. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. So let, let's talk about the beauty of what you do. How have you been enjoying it? What has it added to your life? Has it impacted your family negatively or positively? What exactly would you say has been your profit in doing this business? Ooh. It, it, it is a beauty to have um, a job like this, a business like this, because the flexibility is there. Fine, we're busy from January to about April, end of April, you know, slash early May. Okay, then the others for the rest of the year, it's not like as if you're not busy, but your workload is not as much. Reduced. But with this, yes, it's a little reduced, so you have more flexibility to be able to do a lot more stuff with your family and stuff like that. And if you have, if you plan on having other things on the side, you're able to focus on all of those things, you know, throughout the year. And at the same time, you know, having the bulk of your time available for your tax season. All right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. but so uh, what I could deduce from what you just said is that it gives you time. Like the bulk of the year, you have time to spend with your family. I most likely do something, do other things by the side. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Like you could give you opportunities to. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because of people that I might be thinking of like going into what you do. So they might be looking, try, thinking of the pros and the cons of it. Yes, depending on the size of your business, you know, the, you know, everybody have different skills. You know, sometimes, depend, like I said, depending on the scale of your business, you you have clientele like from January to December because you have to understand that it's not only taxes that people do, okay? And then in the course of you doing taxes for people, are, do, are there some people that have letters during the course of the year? Are there people that have changes to their income or certain things to their family that you are still able to deal with during the course of the year? Such as, oh, if, you, if your clients, they have a new job or they're moving out of state and stuff like that. Oh, we're, we're trying to make this plan. How do you think this, you know, what can we, you know, what can we do that will benefit us at this particular time? Okay. Oh, a new baby has been, add, has been added to the family. Should we just go ahead and change our W4 at work and include this child so that we can be able to bring home our money or just 
you know, hold off and not had. Oh, it's time for the um, health insurance um, enrollment season. Oh, there, my job wants us to, you know, re-enlist for another, um, you know, to redo our insurance. Should we just go ahead and do this based off of the amount of medical expenses we have last year and stuff like that? You know, a lot of things, activities happen all through the year that with that you are, you, you know, you're available to your clients and you're able to still help them or, or offer advice here and there. All right. Thank you so, yes, so much. So, guys, you can see she, she knows her onions. She knows what she's talking about. So, you can actually reach out to her if you need assistance with your taxes. And so, I'm going to give you um, five minutes to talk about what you do to sell yourself, advertise yourself. So, let's go. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. So, uh, Proven Tax and Financial Services is a tax preparation um, uh, company. We're located on um, in Conroe, Texas. So, and also, even before this year, we're already been virtual with some of our clients, and this year even gives us more beauty. So, we're able to be we're virtual with you. We're personal with you. If you want to come to our office, you're more than welcome to come. 2508 West Davis. We're between the Simonies um, Car Wash and Bank of America on Highway 105, Suite 102. Feel free to stop by, reach out to us, and then, or you can call, call us at 281-552-8840. 281-552-8840, or email us at provincetaxservices at gmail.com. So we will be more than glad to help you all year round. And if you have any question, even if you're not our, uh, even if you're not our client, right. if you just have some clear clarification about certain things, we'll be more than glad to be of assistance because we believe if we're able to answer your questions, you will be able to be more comfortable with us to, in, either to come do your taxes mm -hmm. with us or to be able to refer somebody to us. So we are always available. All right. Thank you so much, yeah. Ivan, for doing this. Thank you for coming on the show oh, again you. today. We are, so, we are excited to have you. Thank you. Okay. Th so, guys, thank you so much. Ada, if you need help with your taxes, if you need, if you have questions, you can just watch this again, and you get the <laughs> address and a phone number. So, thank you once again, Ayo. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's go on a short break, and then we'll come back with the last guest for today. Welcome back, guys. Um, we have a final guest for today on standby. So our name is Olusheli Chennai, and she's a fabric merchant. She imports fabric from anywhere they sell fabric. She she's been into this for a very long time, like I said, because I think. 2000 the first time I, I heard about our selling fabric was in 2010 if I'm correct So that's been a while she can help you to get the best of the best of fabrics She's into Swiss laces. She's into All kind of fabrics. I can't remember names right now. And so I'm going to have her come on and, and introduce herself So um, welcome to the show Shay Thank you very much Odo. It's welcome. my um joining you today on your program thank you thank you, thank you so much sis so can you just introduce yourself tell us about yourself my name is olusha Chanai. most people have known me for a long time call mm -hmm. me shay gold yeah because i started my business um with gold mm -hmm. after a while i started selling fabric mm -hmm. i'm little fabric and as well i work as an entertainer as well okay. i had my master degree in entertainment business Okay. which I feel is a plus to what I do. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How long have you been doing this? Can you tell us how long have you been doing this business? I actually started doing business far back when I was in college. Okay. Because my grandmom was known as Yalasho. Mm -hmm. And my mom too was known as Yalasho, even though she was a teacher. Mm. So I developed the interest and I'm doing public business as far back as when I was 16. Oh, wow. So I would say it's a family thing. Yeah, yeah it's obviously a it's a family business. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you said you've been doing it for how long? You said you started when you were 16? That's a long time. Actually, ago. when I was 16, yeah, because then it was with my mom. You know, my mom goes, she travels. Sometimes she goes to Kano, she was doing all this um, lacy, um, all this billing brocade, so I help her out as well. And anytime when I'm on holidays, um, if I go to um, Elisha or Shaw State, to um, spend some time with my grandma, I usually um, go with her to her shop then. So it's something that I would say is a passion. It's yeah, something that obviously. I love doing. So. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so uh, where do you get your fabrics from? Like here yeah, in the United States, I know you started back home in Nigeria because that was when I was patronizing you. You, you later became a friend of my sister who was patronizing yeah. you as well. So um, where do you get your fabrics from? Oh, don't. I would say every business yeah, yeah. have their own. <laughs> I okay. talk from anywhere. Okay. Yeah, I talk from anywhere. I do sweets. I do um Korean ladies because right now I won't like to you because of the economy right now in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Sweet blade is something that we don't really have so much customer that okay. ask for it okay. because to really get hundred percent sweet blade, then well. I would say 10 years ago, I can sell Suzy for 45000 mm -hmm. But right now, I can't sell Suzy for nothing less than 150000 Oh, wow. And I don't, yeah, so most people now, you know when you're in business, you have to, uh, you have to think about your customers as well. Yeah. So yeah. right now, anywhere, anywhere, I have to like start for my, for my fabric. So I do mm -hmm. mostly Swiss, Korea, but I think I have my custom, I have different customers for different um, fabrics. So okay. customer will tell you that oh I, I don't have so much money for one fifty to buy um mm. fabric that we use for just a weekend for one fifty thousand. Mm. Can I get something of thirty five, mm. forty? So uh, you have to like source from different countries to be able to like please satisfy your customers. Oh wow. wow. All right. Thank you so much. So um let's talk about you know when you're doing businesses, there are beauties and there are challenges. Yes, a lot of people just want to think that. Once I start this business, I'll just be making profit, I'll just be making money. Yes, that's one of the beauties of having your own business. But let's talk about the challenges. What are the challenges you faced so far in this business? Oh no, I will tell you that um, if you really want to do business, I always advise people. Some people will come to me, they'll say, oh, my mentor, my I'm done, and I say, come. Mm -hmm. If you want to do business, you have to really go to stop for something that you have passion for. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of challenges in business. I remember there was a year where I did um, Ashwebi for um, one of the directors in Nigeria. The Ashwebi, I did it straight from Dubai, then I live in Dubai. The Ashwebi, I think that was probably like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. The Ashwebi was $6,500. I had yeah. to send it to Kenya Airways mm -hmm. um, with um, um, access goods. I found out that the Ashwebi didn't get to Nigeria. Oh, wow. It didn't get to Nigeria, it didn't get to Kenya. So I had to look for how I was able to produce another one, not mm. to disappoint my customer. Mm. So it's like that year I lost six thousand five, the profit yeah. and everything. Yeah. And uh, being it's there like that, that sometimes um during um Christmas I have to send some goods to Nigeria. They will say, oh, custom, they have to like see some goods because business comes with lots of challenges. Yeah. But I always want to encourage people that if you don't have passion for something, don't, don't do, do it. it. Because it's not something that you start and you think, oh, if I start it, I'll start making profit. Mm -mm. It doesn't work like that. I've, well, sometimes it comes with risk. Sometimes you make profit, sometimes you have to let go. Mm. So I would advise people if you want to do business, mm, please go for something that you have passion for. Mm. Because along the line, you will be so, you'll be discouraged. But if it's something you have passion for, it will keep you going. You will feel, oh, this is my passion. I don't want to let it go. Let me just try and continue. So it comes with lots of risk. A lot. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. So let's talk about the beauty of it as well. Because so we are not a Debbie Gamna <laughs> that is just talking about the negatives. <laughs> so what are the what are the beauties? What are the beauties of running your own business? What and what has it added to you, to your family, to your lifestyle? What exactly has been the positives for you in this business? I would say doing business has uh, really changed me because 
Some people make jest of me, they call me two-faced. The reason why they call me two-faced is simple. If you're not close to me, you would think I'm someone that loves party. Mm. I'm not really someone that loves party. Mm. Yeah. But because of my business, I've made a lot of friends. I've known a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And during the business as well, I would say, we make profit as well and we keep growing. At least doing my business, I've been able to make money and I'm, sometimes I don't you've lost money as well <laughs> yeah i've lost money yeah. as well but yeah. uh, when i remember the beauty mm-hmm. sometimes you make profit sometimes you just have to let go and you know being a mom as well because mm-hmm. you said something about Ogba. being yeah. a mom and relocation moving around because of my husband's job because before coming um, to us my store was um, next to um Sheraton hotel opic plaza I have to close it as well, yeah. so that I'll be able to move with my family. So um, it comes with lots of challenges and it comes with um, lots of profit as well. It's, you know, because life is just a roller coaster. Yeah. I will use that word. Yeah. So um, yeah. if you really want to go into business, prepare your mind. Sometimes you, you're happy, sometimes you're down, sometimes you're up there. Oh, but nice. I will encourage any woman that wants to really be an entrepreneur. Just that's it. It's it's not easy. I I always tell people I started my business. You know what? Yeah, let let me just cut you in because I know you're into a lot of things that I think you said you 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 started with gold. So are you still selling gold? I started with gold. Are you still selling gold? Oh, you still do. I'm still selling gold. Yeah. Okay. So now let's talk about women getting into businesses and entrepreneurship and all that. What would you tell someone that wants to like? You know, the fear of failure can actually pull you back. The fear of not, mm-hmm. this thing not producing the way I want it to co- produce. You know, so what would you mm-hmm. tell women that are thinking of being entrepreneurs, that are thinking of starting off their own businesses? I would love to encourage any woman that want to probably start their own business. But I will have to tell them something. When you're starting, I want to just beg any woman that wants to go into it. Don't have the mind that, oh, I'm going into this thing because I want to make money. Make money. Fine, you are going into this thing because you want to make money. But first remember you are going into that particular thing because you have passion for it. Because you want to put smiles on some people's faces. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing to have a business of your own. It's like a freedom. You can, you'll be able to have time for your family, for your kids, um, for um, extended family as well. So I would just say, if you want to do anything, I keep saying, do something that you have passion for. I started doing gold business because I love gold. I'm someone that is crazy when it comes to gold. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I love. So I try to like, when I see people that want to go into business that has to do with something like that gold, because you have to, you need a lot of money. I will tell them that gold is not the way it used to be before. Then when you sell gold, you can make three times. Now I won't like to you. <laughs> you are not. It's just like you have to just be in business. Mm-hmm. So if you want, really want, I encourage anyone, any woman, don't be discouraged. It's not an easy thing. But one thing I keep telling women: when you start business, don't expect that business to grow overnight. Yeah. Business yeah. takes two, three years, sometimes four years before it can mm-hmm. grow. But most times our business goes on that easily, especially Nigerian women. Mm. Because most men, they will give their wife money to start business. You give your wife money to start business, and you are expecting that um, you are expecting that your wife to start feeding the family. Immediately she starts mm. doing the business. Mm. Already you close that business because she's taking the profit yeah. and feeding the family. Feeding the family. She's taking the profit and putting food on the table. Yeah. And along the line, you find that in, after like six months, she can't travel again. She can't do the business mm. again. And some men will say, "Oh, I gave you money to start business. You gave her money to start business." You didn't give her money to feed the family. You empower yeah. her. So when you empower a woman like that, leave her, leave the business for some time to grow. Leave the woman for probably um two, three years before you start pushing her to put money um to put food on the mm-hmm. table or giving her some um bills to pay. Yeah. So I think any woman that wants to go do business, it's a good thing, but please uh men, please a job. Be cool, <laughs> please. When you are buying off, don't expect us to eat the profits. 
Well, we're yeah, actually supposed it's... to put the profits back into the business to grow yeah, it. Yeah, because it's killing business. Yeah, yeah. it kills business easily. Yeah. So I always beg that, please. I don't know. I'm just using this your platform as well to beg yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. If they are encouraging us to do business, there is no woman, which is what I always tell me. There is no woman that can't do good. But when the pressure is too much, the business she starts six months, the business will probably collapse because. Mm. Profit in business is not so much. The fabric that we're selling now, maybe when you make uh, maybe ten dollar on each fabric, it's something. If I make um, ten dollar on like ten fabric in a week, that is like probably hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And you want me to use that hundred dollars to pay bills? Mm -hmm. Before you know it, that business is probably it's going gone. to collapse. Yeah. So, so I encourage anybody that wants to do business, but please, uh, it's not um, it doesn't. <laughs> the profit does not come overnight. So you have to be patient. Yeah, yeah, and we, we have to be we consistent, to. strategic, and not just keep spending yeah. the profits. Yeah, yeah. Thank you and so much. Most times it's not it's not our fault that we spend the profit. Uh, yes, I know. When, I know. <laughs> when there are bills to be paid, you yeah. have to probably. <laughs> yeah, of you course. You have to dig your hand into the yes. money and spend Circumstances, it. circumstances it, at times we necessitate yeah, you spending the profit. It, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it takes it takes the grace of God and. Lot of discipline mm -hmm. before you can probably achieve mm -hmm. that your goal um, in the business world. Mm -hmm. Rome was yeah. not built in a day. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. So I'm um, um, I'm gonna give you five minutes to um, sell your business to advertise yourself. I know you you said you sell gold, you sell fabrics, and I know there is something you have this thing called Shaitan's closets as well. I don't know if that is still in existence. So I'm yeah. just gonna give you like. Five minutes to sell all your businesses, everything you do. Um, my name is Olushe Chanai. I'm the brain behind Macester. Um, Macester, we are into quality fabric. Quality fabric at affordable price. We are, we are out there to satisfy our customers. We do Swiss, we do Korea, we do um, Austria mm. laces, we do um, Ankara as well. We are out there, um, we, we, we work with your budget. If you want to do Ashwabi, we work with your budget to ask you how much do you want to spend for the Ashwabi thing. And also, I do gold as well. I, I, my gold, I um, get my gold from Dubai. I do also gold and I do um, retail as well. So, wedding band, chain, customized and pendants, what, whatever thing you want from gold. We are out there to like um do it for you. Right now we are on Instagram as um marketers. And also we are on Facebook. On Facebook we are um um our Facebook account is I am marketer. And we are looking forward by next year we're going because most of our customers are asking that they want to um they want us to go back to um um to brick um brick store. Which yeah, is a, a physical a physical location. Yeah, they want us to have a brick store, they want us to have an outlet. Even though we have our logistic in Lagos, but most customers they want us back. So by God's grace, um we are looking at next year May, we should be able to have something in Lagos. Okay. That you can walk into the store and be able to pick your store um, immediately instead of um our usual seven to ten working days that we ship mm -hmm. from US. So we we'll appreciate it if you can follow us and patronize us and introduce your friends to um, to us on um, our online business. But we right. promise our customers by next year we will be on ground in Lagos. You can reach me um, on my phone number 470-435-4196 on WhatsApp. Uh, 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 please, strictly on business. Don't worry, don't worry, you won't yeah. get prank calls. <laughs> yeah, strictly business. Um, yeah. I'm always available. You can send me, if I can't pick your call, maybe I'm at work or something, just send me a WhatsApp call. I'll appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for telling us about your businesses. We appreciate the knowledge that you've shared with us today. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. Um
Thank you for joining us on today's episode. There you've had it. We brought we brought you three business owners. They've told you their challenges. They've told you the beauties. They've told you what they've enjoyed so far in having their own businesses. And they've actually even gone ahead to encourage women that wants to start something, you want to do something for yourself, you could get an encouragement from that, from all they've said to them. So thank you once again for joining us. It encourages us to know that we are reaching out to you guys out there. So thank you once again, and this is it for today's episode. Until next time when we come your way, which will be the 26th of December. Mm. You have to look forward to that day. Because we are going to gist, we are going to laugh, we are going to marry together. Thank you once again, and see you next time. Bye.